Hey golfers, and welcome back to another episode of Second Swing Thoughts. Um, we are back in the studio today, joined by Pierce Lanou for some tour talk, some updates on well, a very big weekend in in the kind of pro golf world. So, um, and then of course this week we have the Open Championship, which is my favorite one to watch. At least there's nothing like getting up at three, four, five in the morning, mm -hmm. flipping on the Open and watching guys grind through cloudy, windy, potentially raining conditions. Um, so we have that this week, but we got to cover what happened this past weekend, Pierce. Um, you wrote it up for the Sunday Swing, which is up on secondswing.com. Um, the Scottish Open was kind of the, the big premier event this weekend because you had a really big field. You had kind of the best from both PGA Tour and DP World Tour, sort of sanctioned by both tours. Um, it's becoming a really, really big and fun event for these guys to play in at the Renaissance Club. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun, and it's gotten, like you said, it's kind of become become a lot bigger over the last handful of years and getting to kind of see you know the dp world tour and the pga tour playing the same field is for me it's super fun and playing the week before the open it's kind of like a little mini preview of what you mm -hmm. know we're probably going to see this week so for me yeah it's it's super fun to watch i don't quite dedicate the 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 viewing hours in the middle of the night to the scottish like i right. do the open but um, you know, waking up on, on Sunday morning and, and seeing the finish is, is, a, is a fun right. way to start out start out the Sunday for sure. Especially this past one, we had the tee times moved up for yeah. um, the potentially unplayable wins is mm -hmm. what they said for the afternoon on Sunday. But even with that said, it was still very difficult. Um, if you go up and down the leaderboard Sunday, lots of guys shooting three, four, five over par. It seemed like the average for the day was probably one or two over par. And then... Uh, of course, as we kind of talk about the guys' contention and stuff, you had uh, Scotland's own Bobby Mack, Mac Robert McIntyre. Who yeah, he said, you know, in his his comments after the tournament that this was one of the events, this one of the Open, or like the ones he dreamed of winning as a kid, and to see him come so close with that shot, that three wood that he hit into the green on eighteen. Also speaks to how windy it was that yeah. he was 213 yards Something away like that. and hit three wood mm -hmm. to a few feet. Um, so, and then six under on Sunday. That's one of the best rounds I think on tour of the year, given the conditions, given sure. probably what it meant to him in, yep. in that event. That has to be I, it, for me. It's probably my I would n dub it as the best round of the year so far on tour. Yeah, I think I would probably agree with you there. And you know, when people think of this win for Rory and and um, kind of, you know, getting back in the winner's circle. There, I think most people will think of the two irony hit yeah. um, coming up 18 there, but I personally think McIntyre's shot was, was better. Oh, I mean, yeah. it was closer to the hole, obviously, but just the, the fact that it was a, you know, a three wood out of the kind of that matted down mm -hmm. dry fescue was just, it was, yeah, it was remarkable. And when he hit that shot, I, I kind of thought he was going to win it. Oh yeah, it, I'm sure he did right, too. If I mean, not, at least get into a playoff, right? So, um, yeah, like you said, kind of the hometown favorite there. Mm -hmm. Kind of was. It seemed like, you know, the stars had a line for him, um, but he yeah, obviously spoiled by by Rory there coming in. So right, he was kind of aiming to pull off the Nick Taylor, which is winning yeah. your your uh, the national your nation's open, yeah. open uh, the way Nick Taylor did on that long eagle putt in, right, in uh, the playoff against Fleetwood uh, at the RBC Canadian Open. And we almost had another playoff with a kind of uh, their nation's own, if you will, with the Scottish Open, but Rory just had to make two spectacular birdies yeah. on the last yep. two holes. Both of those holes playing substantially over par. 18 was playing, I think I saw like uh, seven tenths of a shot over par yeah. on yep. Sunday. There, well, there was three birdies on that hole the whole day. <laughs> and one of which was Robert McIntyre yep. and the third was, was Rory, obviously. Yeah. So. Pretty, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty ridiculous. Yeah, and I think it, it, you, you see the videos that go viral on social media and stuff of how, especially Rory's couple shots in there, how well they can flight the ball into the wind, and it speaks to well the fact that McIntyre hit a three wood, and Rory hit two iron into a par four. Mm -hmm. You know, given the wind and stuff, I mean that is a long golf hole. Yeah. That's a tough one, and there's that's probably why there was only three birdies all day. Yep, and to see both of them come up big when they really needed to is I think it's a testament to how good the game is right now, but also the the product of these 
you know, worldwide events. I mean, you get the best golfers in the world together like that. Um, and we got a major coming up this week. It's just a treat to watch. Uh, and it's, I mean, I, it's one of those, I wish that would have been, you know, available at the normal parts of the day, mm -hmm. right? Where we didn't have those early tee times because that would have been, yeah. uh, I wish more eyes could have seen that live and experienced that. Yeah, yeah for sure. And I think, uh, Rory said that two iron usually goes like 260 and you yeah. hit it from like 204, mm -hmm. something like that. So like he's playing a 60 yard right. wind adjustment there. Like that's pretty substantial. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think I could get it on the green from there with a small bucket if you gave me one. No, so. no I, that, that's one of those, there's nothing tougher and there's all, it's always something I'll be in awe of is how well the golfers at this level control the ball into that kind of wind because I know when I play golf and it's really windy and I'm going directly into the fan, it's you almost feel like you're just hitting and hoping. You're yeah, just, it you could go ball anywhere. And it, could, it, could, <laughs> it could go anywhere, literally. Yeah. So uh, and we should talk about the equipment change too because he's probably not the only player making some sort of change this week to kind of get a club in the bag that will keep the flight low mm -hmm. like that. But it, it speaks to the completely different conditions that guys deal with if they're playing on the PGA Tour with a lot of events in the USA going overseas you get the blustery winds you get firmer conditions you get all these things that call for a lower ball flight yeah and to see Rory put that club in the bag that kind of P762 iron and 4 iron I believe yeah he's got both. a 4 too um, and, um, and the idea there being a little lower spin lower launch to see it pay off so dramatically and instantly like that is, is really cool. Yeah, that ball flight was incredible. Like it, into that wind to keep it, like it, it looked like it was like 20 feet off the ground. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just crazy. Like you said, like playing over there is so different. And you kind of already answered my question. I was going to ask you like your favorite majors in order. Yeah. You put the open at, at number one. In terms of the entertainment value i think it's the open yeah and, and i agree with you and i was i was going to make the case for why that is because i think like most average golf fan when they're asked that question probably says the masters yeah and that's like my gut reaction as well but then when you think about it, it's like okay the open is the oldest golf tournament in the world like they started playing that thing in 1860 yeah so by the time the masters was even a thing it had already been played like 74 times and, you know, you hear, you know, the Masters, it's a tradition unlike any other. Well, yeah, it is. But the Open, I would argue, is is a much, much greater tradition. Yeah, I mean, and, that's that's how golf, the original creators yeah. of the game, designed it to be played. And, yep. you know, and, I, and I'm all for advancement of the game and modernizing it <clears throat> and um, kind of building the game or reconstructing the game for how it can be managed nowadays with all of the swing speed and all that. But... You know, rolling hills like the pot bunkers, the windy, rainy sometimes conditions. Like that's how the game was originally created and sort of meant to be played. So it's yeah. always refreshing to kind of mid July every year go back and watch golf on the you know across the pond right. and see how these guys are able to transition their games to match what's needed because right. it is completely different. I mean, even last year while the scores were super low at St Andrews, like there's still completely different types of golf shots being mm -hmm. hit. You know, you're you're playing for 50, 60 more yards of roll maybe if it's downwind, right? Or you're, you know, hitting a club or two short to the green because it's going to roll all the way up versus in here in America, if it's soft conditions, that ball isn't moving once it hits the yeah. ground. So things like that are just completely different. And I'm sure caddies have all kinds of homework to do too. Yeah, going into it. yeah for sure. The caddies are busy for, for the Open Championship. And, you know, kind of as like a golf nerd, or traditionalist as you will i think that's kind of why i love the open so much is because like and we kind of saw we saw that at the scottish this week like you get in my opinion the most unique and exciting leaderboard in yeah. any in any event because there's no like one real style of of player that fits a lynx course i don't mm -hmm. think that's just my opinion i think like you have to hit so many different types of shots oh, yeah. and there's so many different ways you can go about each shot like last year we saw cam smith just putting from literally like mm -hmm. everywhere off mm -hmm. the green in the fairway and um 
yeah, I mean that's just why you see you see different types of players win it. Yeah, year in and year out, and there's and that's, I that's believe the, the, the everybody goes over it every year the, the week of the Open. The average age of the winner of the Open is always four or five years older than any other major because mm-hmm. there's just an extra level of experience, um, kind of craftiness, if you will, that's required that you kind of uh, you know earn and sort of add to your arsenal over the years of playing it. Yeah, and it's clearly. I mean, last year with even Cam Smith, uh, a younger player relative to the rest of the golf, the pro golf landscape. But like you said, putting from 30, 40 yards off the green at times, or putting even that shot on seventeen, iconic one last year. Yeah, off to that save that slope, to save like, the par. Literally, like, I would have putted that into the bunker. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's putting from. He's got a bunker directly between him and the hole, and he puts to the side to get the two putt, and then makes the next 10, 12 foot or whatever yep, it was. Yep. So little things like that are just the types of shots that you get in this tournament and this area of the world and in the golf course space that you don't get on the PGA Tour usually. Right, so yeah. uh, that's why, I, to me, it's the most entertainment value. And, yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm very, very excited for it. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll talk about the Open here towards the end. We have, I just want to touch on one more thing from the Scottish, and that was, well, Scotty Scheffler, mm-hmm. uh, because he now has 18 straight top 12 finishes, yeah. which is absolutely ridiculous. The streak um, continues. So for perspective, the last time he finished worse than top 12, if you're a football fan, was week seven of the 2022 NFL season. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's stupid. It's incredible. It's and stupid. I think, like... Probably half of those top 12s were like top sixes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he's, you know, yeah, he's a top five machine. Yeah. Um, it, it, and, you know, and it actually does put it in perspective in a way, too, of like how great Tiger was at his peak because it's not even like people still aren't really drawing that comparison between Scotty and Tiger yet because of how much more of this Scotty would have to do for that to become a valid right. argument. Uh, but this is an unparalleled stretch in my, you know, in the last really decade plus where I've been truly paying attention to pro golf as much as I can, I've never seen anything like this. No. Just a guy that his A game, his C game, whatever it is. Yeah. T8, T9, T4. Right. Win. You know, it's unbelievable what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And I think like you mentioned kind of the Tiger Scotty comparison, I think the reason, like the biggest reason why a lot of people kind of aren't making that, that comparison yet is just because of like how much tiger would win oh yeah like if tiger was in three or four shots of the lead on on a sunday like there was a good chance he was gonna he was gonna win yeah and i mean scotty has once i think six times now in in his young career which obviously is is super impressive but the rate at which tiger was winning was oh yeah was unmatched so i think that's probably the main reason why that's still kind Mm of a borderline Tiger's dominance just won't really be touched. No. Uh, but this is right now what Scotty's doing week in, week out is about as close as we might right. ever see. Statistically, again. like like yeah. ball striking wise and in that that type of thing, it's definitely very mm-hmm. comparable for right. sure. Right. Yeah. So I mean, I just I wanted to touch on that. I I I, I feel like his run needs to be getting even more attention. Mm-hmm. And I mean, 18 in a row at T12 or better is it's it's difficult to fathom given how how many really good players there are yeah. in the world right now. Um, to see him rise up like that is is some really special stuff. So yep. um, We do want to cover a couple other events that happened over the weekend briefly. Um, we had a fun finish to the Barbasol mm-hmm. Championship. Um, Vincent Norman almost threw it all away completely on yeah. 18 <laughs> there. Um, if you weren't following he entered hole 18 with a one shot lead he was at 23 under i yep. believe yep and uh shaky tee shot into the thick rough and hacked it out from there and anyway wound up curling in around kind of a almost a 360 yeah uh hold in I the what, eight or nine is. foot putt yeah something like that it's you free you freeze frame it like frame by frame you look at where the ball is about four inches out and you're like that ball went in the hole mm-hmm. um but then, of course, in the playoff, he uh, does make the par to hold on to win. Um, so it, it's, I mean, that's a big win for him because, yeah. I, truthfully, a lot, a lot, not a lot of, if any, of the listeners and viewers had heard of him probably no, before probably this. No, probably not. But now he's got, you know, two years on tour. He's got, uh, I believe, is he going to the Open after winning? Or 
You eight know, years I was back? trying to figure that out yesterday because I was wondering the same thing, but I don't think the Barbasol okay. is is an open qualifying right. event. I think the Scottish was the last Got it. event that I know the John Deere previously did that. Yep. It's the week before, so maybe that's where I'm getting yeah. confused. But um, certainly he now has set himself up extremely well for yep. his future prospect. I mean, he's got two years on the PGA Tour. He can, he's in any of these events he wants to play in. Um, and now he can, you know, I mean, grind out as many cuts as he can. He's going to make a lot, heck of a lot more money yeah. and open up some more doors there. So good for him to sink that putt when he needed to. Yeah, yeah, 25-year-old rookie, by the way, too. So, yeah, to be able to kind of close it out. I mean, they say golf's a game of inches. I think in oh, his yeah. case, it was more of like a game of millimeters on that that, that putt on 18 to just to just get into the playoff. Um, yeah, I mean, that's like you said, you kind of covered it, but huge, huge mm-hmm. for, for a guy at that stage of his career, mm-hmm. definitely. And then uh, on the LPGA Tour, too, over in Ohio at the Dana Open. Um, another name that probably not a lot of people are familiar with, mm-hmm. but Lynn Grant. Um, there was never really any doubt in that entire event. You got yeah. to Friday, Saturday, and she had built herself, I believe, through th- through three rounds. She was up six shots. I think so. And so at that point, it's you need a collapse from her, and yeah. she really didn't do any of that. She no. sta- One had a pretty steady on round Sunday. on Sunday. Yeah. Um, so she... Now that's her first win too. Also a Swede, by the yeah, way. Yeah, so twenty-four Swede, year old yep. for her, and and you know Vincent, twenty-five year old Swede. So kind of a yeah. cool weekend for, yeah. for Sweden. big weekend for Sweden in yeah. golf. Uh, yeah. So Lynn Grant gets the win, and actually um, the U.S. Women's Open winner, Allison Corpus, was yeah. the runner-up. So she was she was the biggest challenger. She did make a run there on Sunday, yeah, kind of make it a little bit interesting. She birdied, I think, like five of her last six or yeah. five of her last seven, something like that. I mean, she did. It made you, you watch until the end, right? right? You was you were yeah. not completely convinced until, you yeah. know, the last putt fell on 18. Yeah. But um, so some trends there emerging. Maybe Corpus mm-hmm. is going to kind of, you know, um, snowball these into yeah. a lot of wins. You kind of see these stretches in, in, in the women's game a right. lot more where win after top five, win, you know. Um, this whole Scotty Scheffler thing on the PGA Tour is a little more rare, but you do see it... Uh, perhaps more commonly Mm -hmm. on the LPGA. Yeah, and I think it's worth noting too, like like that's a super impressive way to back up a major championship win the week before. Like that's hard to do. Yeah, Um, especially on a course that yields birdies. Like it's tough to go from a tough course where par is a good score. Yeah, Uh, Then you go to a course that's kind of an event that's a birdie fest and to contend that way Mm -hmm. kind of shows that you can win in multiple right. facets. You can win the, yep. the tough, grind it out, make par course, and you can win on the birdie fast course. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Super cool for her. To, and um, yeah, I mean, maybe she's going to be, you know, one of the yeah, one of the next big names out there. I mean, yeah. there's there's a handful of them. But and like you've said, there's so much talent on both tours right. now that it it's um, a run like that is tough to really tough to accomplish mm-hmm. to go to win a major and then the very next week finish second. Yeah. Um, which, you don't see a lot of that anymore. One more thing I wanted to, to mention on the LPGA Tour side. Did you see what Charlie Hall did? I did not. She had a round. Oh, I did see this. She yes, had a round. Yes. Mm-hmm. She shot, I think, 68. It was the first round, I believe. 68, I think. Yep. And she had 10 birdies. And then in there was a 10. Yep. I think on I a par four. <laughs> which just like, wow. So there's two ways of looking at that. There right. is, um, you shot a 68 with a 10. Mm-hmm. Or... There is, I made 10 birdies and I shot a 68. Yeah. One of them feels a little better than the yeah. other. Um, I would probably be in the side of, uh, I shot 68 with 10 birdies. Yeah. You know, what's my problem? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> um, but it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it goes to show, you know, these, these professionals are, are not immortal. Oh, yeah. Um, also you, show, I mean, the mental, like, fortitude oh, to man. make a 10 and then come back. I think she had, like, seven or eight birdies after that. Mm-hmm. Um, super that's cool. Super impressive. Uh, so, and she played well at the U.S. Women's Open yeah. as well. She had yeah. really good final. She made the charge on Sunday. Uh, I think she so, shot six under. Uh, so, a couple yeah. games trending there for sure mm-hmm. in the LPGA. Um, all right, we got to get to the Open here, um, and we'll discuss a little bit, kind of, of you know, I mean, we talked a little bit about the event and why we love it so much. Um, and I believe we're back now um, at the at the site where Rory last won a major. So, yeah. it is. It's eerily similar to was it 2019 when the uh the open was in northern ireland and there was sort of this um 
storybook ending coming together for Rory to win sort of where he's from. Mm -hmm. And uh, the stars had aligned. He was playing really well then as well. And then he went out and shot like 78 or 79 in the first, in the first round. Yeah. Um, not saying that's going to happen this time, but right. it seems like there's just all these stars aligning for Rory this week after the win at the Scottish, mm -hmm. the way he finished, and then coming back to a place where he's already won a major. Yeah. Well, in 2019, the Northern Irishman did win the Open. That's true. Shane Lowry. That's true, yeah. So, you know, you did get that, that side of it. But, um, yeah, I think Rory's probably feeling as confident yeah. as ever right now coming off the Scottish Open win, which was his first win since October of last year, 2022. So, um, you know, I think he's had he's had a lot of chances to win since then, and he just hasn't quite, you know, broken through that that mm -hmm. door. So it's good to see it's good to see him pick another one up. And I think for a guy like that, coming coming off of a, a win at a very similar type of type of course, he's going to be. I mean, I'm expecting yeah. I'm expecting big things from him this week, as I'm sure the whole right. golf universe is. Um, yeah, that's where the, I mean these majors are crazy because you, you think of you know, we could put together 15, 20 names. We're like, yeah, you know, that, that's a very a realistic. You can win a lot of players. Yeah, and the best sure. part is that at the U.S. Open, we probably did the same thing, and we had we did not mention Wyndham Clark. Right. So, um, and and obviously we can talk about I mean, we talk about Scotty how consistent he's been. I'm, I would be stunned if he wasn't in the mix over the weekend. Right. Um, John Rahm's interesting because he hasn't mm -hmm. been actually. He hasn't super played dangerous. Since the Travelers. Yeah, he hasn't been super dangerous lately in any of the events he right. has played either. Yeah. He's um he's, I mean again, he's still one of the best players in the world. I believe he's now he's world number three. I believe Rory yep, jumped. Rory this jumped week. up the two with the win. Um, so still a threat, but it's eerily similar to Augusta, where it seemed like Scotty and Rory had a lot of the attention. <laughs> And then Rom came through and played yeah. the best golf. So um, that those three guys are always sort of the, the big three to watch. And then uh, I guess from there, do you have any names that you're going to watch? Oh, or yeah. any sleepers you might have yeah. this week um, yeah. that uh, are catching your attention? Yeah, Robert McIntyre. Of course, yeah. He's. I mean, say what you will about last week and, and what he did. He's actually had some some pretty impressive finishes in majors in the past. I know mm -hmm. he's contended at the Masters before. Yep. Um, and I think he's played the Open fairly well as well. So, um, you know, coming off of coming off of the second place this week, he's obviously in good form. Um, being from Scotland, you know, he he was born in in these conditions. This is right. his bread and butter. So, I think I think he's definitely going to going to have a chance to kind of go yeah. maybe get a little redemption this week. Yeah, um, the nation of left-handed golfers is definitely going to be rooting for, oh yeah. for Bobby Mack this week. Yeah, yeah, and then um, I, I, I also really like Tommy Fleetwood. Mm -hmm. Been trending in the right direction after kind of a couple of down years. Um, you know, he lost in the playoff a few weeks ago. He's had, I think, a kind of a mixture of top five-ish finishes in the in the recent months. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I also really like Min Woo Lee. Yeah, kind of another guy that can do it all. He can hit it really low. Um, he can bomb it. He's Scottish Open winner a couple years ago, yep, I believe. Yep. So Scottish Open winner. He can putt. He can kind of, yeah, like he, he can do everything. So yeah, those are kind of my three: Bobby Mack, Fleetwood, and and Min Woo that are maybe not as high on the radar right. of, of favorites per se, but guys that I think have a legitimate chance of contending, if not winning right. this week. Uh, so. I did see a stat about. Fleetwood, I believe he is the only player this season to be top 30 in the strokes gained, or at least on the PJ Tour, off the tee, approach, short game, and putting, yeah. all four categories. That's uh, um, Which, that's a great recipe for success, and the fact that he hasn't won with that yet mm -hmm. is kind of startling, but it points to that I mean, he's going to win soon. Yep. It might not be necessarily this event with this field, but he... It's only a matter of time. Yeah, and this is kind of what we've seen throughout the season already with different players. You know, Jason Day, yep. Ricky Fowler, Wyndham Clark, all kind of on that similar trajectory of playing really good golf and coming really close a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, finally it clicks and, and they get yeah. it done. So I think with with Tommy, you just need Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah. the majors because Sunday seems to be his day. Sunday's his day, yeah. He's had some low some low Sundays at, at majors in the past for sure. Yeah, so. especially in tough conditions. Yeah. He's able to 
whatever it is, he's able to put up those low numbers on Sunday and kind of squeak out that, that top mm-hmm. five. But he, if he's in contention prior to that yep. Sunday, maybe we'll see something magical. Yeah, which, by the way, at the Scottish, he played he played pretty well. He, he struggled on Thursday and Friday. I think he, like, barely made the cut. Mm-hmm. And then he, he kind of, I think he shot seven under on yeah, vaulted back up. Saturday. And then uh, double at the last yesterday mm-hmm. kind of dropped him back to, I think, right. a tie for sixth. But still, impressive yeah. finish. Um, so for me, I'm actually going to start with a couple of live players. Okay. Defending champion Cam Smith yep. he won a couple weeks ago. Um, and as we talked about already a little bit, the, just his game seems to fit what's required at an open championship. Yeah. The, the short game kind of creativity, the really, really consistent putter. Um, and I know there's a bit of, a, there's an emphasis here driving the ball and staying out of that thick fescue or maybe bunkers. And I think yeah. that's the big question mark for him. Um, you can be a little, you can get away with it a little bit more at St. Andrews. Right. But um, a lot more might room be, out there. yeah, there's not as much room this week. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, I'm, I'm going to mention Brooks because yep. this year he's been up there in the majors. He's been hanging around. Um, no reason he to think he won't be up there. Yep. Uh, I believe, I mean, he was probably around 20th or so, if I remember correctly, at the U.S. Open. So, but the other two, obviously, he was runner-up in one PGA. Yeah. So. yeah, and I think his last two opens were both top tens yeah. as well. So. Yeah, so he's definitely he's got the got game, the game for, for it. it, the short game. He'll putt well, um, and he drives the ball most of the time pretty consistently with that power fade. So, um, And then I also wanted – this is one that, you know, has – he's got the game for it, has finished really well at the open most of the time in the last several years, and but he's just not being talked about a lot right now. And maybe it's just because his finishes in the last few events haven't been that great, but Tony Finau. Mm. Um, he has a couple top five finishes at the Open in the last, I think, six years, five, six years. Um, and he's still top ten in, in the ball striking categories this year. Just hasn't quite put a ton of good finishes together. Yeah. And that's probably because the putter is usually shaky yep. for he's him. He's another one of those guys where it's, right. it's the putter for him, but for sure. he's actually really good with his wedges, and... That kind of creativity will be required, and I think he has the game for it. And yeah. I think a lot of people are just kind of forgetting about him. So. Yeah, and, and he tends to show up at the majors. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot I, you see kind of in your standard PGA Tour events, like Tony might not play his best, but when it comes major time, he's one of those guys that kind of steps into a, a, a new gear, right? If you and will, and that's the thing is he hasn't won any of them, but like these right. tough conditions bring out the best ball strikers a lot, and that's where he shows up. So he's yeah. been up there a ton. Um, I think it's time for him to win one. Mm-hmm. Ah, I, I'm on board for it. I love Tony. That'd be that'd be a that'd be kind of a yeah. He he's definitely not being talked about really at all. Mm-hmm. So that'd be kind of another maybe a, not a surprise for maybe you or me, but yeah. someone who who loosely follows golf. You know, might might be shocked to yeah. see him win win a major. Yeah, and I selfishly, as a fan, Ricky Fowler winning would be really cool too. Mm-hmm. Um, he also finished highly here in 2014. Yep. Um, I, oh, actually, 2014, I believe, was the year he finished top five in every major. It was. Yeah. So he's sort of back to that form now. So uh, I'll be following him as well. But um, should be a really fun week. I will certainly be up very early on Thursday and very early on Friday to watch some coverage. Um, and I'm sure we'll be back here on Monday discussing a very exciting finish to the yeah. Open Championship. Uh, should be a lot of fun. But any other final predictions or thoughts you want to get out there before we wrap it up here? Oh, let's see. Um, what do you think about JT this week? That is, I don't know. I don't know because, <laughs> that, well, the problem with my – my thoughts on him, he seems like the guy for this event. Yeah. Um, the shot shaping, the flighting, the ball. I mean, he seems like a pro's pro at all of those things. Yeah, he's like the prototype golfer. You, right, but you he hasn't really of. played well over there. No. So, um, I, I'm, I, I mean, he is being forgotten about, He's too. another one of he's those way guys down kind of the in, list that, of favorites. in that Finau category yeah. of guys that have done it all in their career. Right. And... You know, this year has just kind of maybe been been a down year yeah. for him. It definitely has been a down year for him. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I would love to see him play well. Yeah. I'd love to see him kind of find something this week. And, again, I still think he has the game for it. Yeah. I mean, it, it, he is one of those players, kind of like Finau, with the putter is a little bit hot and cold. But yeah. a hot putting week, and he should be up there. Mm-hmm. He switched so. to left-hand low 
on the greens yeah. this last week. I know that and um, made the cut at the Scottish. So maybe, yeah, maybe you know a, a change of, of feel yeah. might be uh, might do him a, a favor yeah. this week. We'll I mean, see. I would I would love to see, love to see it. I mean, it's it's tough when a guy goes through kind of a tough you know, a rut like that. Yeah, but um, yep. he'll be he'll be back. You yeah, know, he's for got sure. too much talent to yep. Yep. let that go to waste. And then, so. One one last guy that that we didn't touch on that we've talked about a lot on on this podcast this season is Hovland. Yes. Who I think last season was in the final pairing at the Open with with Rory yep. um, and Cameron Young. Um, just quite didn't quite have it on on Sunday last year, but another guy just a just a ball striker. So mm-hmm. again, if his putter is cooperating, I think he's going to be right there on Sunday. For you talk sure. about a guy that's due for a major win. Yeah. I mean, he's been just flirting with that that win in basically every event this year. He's yeah. been close. and Seems like for the last three years. Yeah. He's, so, he's been right up there. And he's got the game again. Drives the ball super well. Obviously can flight it every way he needs to. Um, if the short game is there this week, he will certainly be in yeah. contention on Sunday. So, yeah. And we're definitely rooting for him because yeah. we talk about him a lot on the show, and he's got a really fun golf swing to watch. Yep. So, um, yeah, I'm with you on that one. I'll leave it at that because Vic would be fun to see win for sure, and I think he's due for it. Yeah. So, um, I think we'll we'll leave it there for now. We've got a lot of fun golf to watch this week at the Open. Uh, but golfers, we thank you for listening and or watching if you're watching on YouTube channel. Um, leave your comments. Tell us who you think is going to win this week, and um, hey, maybe if you guess right in the comments. We'll send you a little prize pack from Second Swing. But um, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you're subscribed to the podcast on all the podcast platforms, and we'll catch you next time.